That national security meeting started not long ago and involved the deputies. Inspectors for the Organization of the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons arrived in Syria today and tomorrow hope to be on the ground in Douma, where the alleged attack took place. But it's not clear the president intends to wait. An emergency meeting at the U.N. Security Council today where U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley laid blame for Syria's actions on Russia. It is Russia alone that used its veto six times to prevent the condemnation of Assad's use of chemical weapons. If Russia had lived up to its commitment, there would be no chemical weapons in Syria, and we would not be here today. The United States estimates that Assad has used chemical weapons in the Syrian war at least 50 times since the world first took notice in 2013. Public estimates are as high as 200 times. We're again confident uh, that both Syria had uh, responsibility in this chemical weapons attack, but we also hold Russia responsible for their failure to stop chemical weapons attacks from taking place. Britain and France say they have the evidence. We have proof that last week, now nearly 10 days ago, that chemical weapons were used, at least chlorine, and that they were used by Bashar al-Assad's regime. The French French president called Russian President Vladimir Putin today, offering an olive branch to return to a negotiated settlement to end the Syrian civil war. But the Russian foreign minister doubled down, calling evidence of a chemical attack a hoax, even blaming the UK for seeking to frame Assad in Russia. We have irrefutable evidence that this was another staging which the special services of a certain nation had a hand in, a nation that was trying hard to be in the front row of the Russia-phobic campaign. Which a spirited response from the British UN ambassador. This is grotesque. It's a blatant lie. It's some of the worst piece of fake news we've yet seen from the Russia propaganda machine. USS Harry S. Truman, accompanied by seven warships armed with hundreds of Tomahawk missiles, is still a week away from the Mediterranean and has 45 strike aircraft on board, in addition to dozens of helicopters. The Pentagon has enough assets in the region, USS Donald Cook in the eastern Mediterranean, along with two U.S. warships in the Red Sea, as well as a classified number of submarines. The French have a frigate armed with cruise missiles in position. The British have tornado jets in Cyprus, as well as submarines in the Mediterranean. A Russian admiral threatened to torpedo the USS Donald Cook if it fires on Syrian targets. Russia has warships and likely submarines in the Mediterranean. The Pentagon wants to know what is the long-term strategy if ordered to carry out a strike. Brett? Tense situation tonight. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you.